So I'm going to give a quick little um, what's new and coming with Microsoft Graph Connectors and show a little bit about what are some of the um, things you can do with Postman to be able to work with Graph Connectors as well. So for those of you who are uh, unaware, Microsoft Graph Connectors is really about being able to take external data and have that data surfacing in a number of different native Microsoft 365 experiences. There's a few of them that are already GA, including things like Search, uh, and we're working on um, in development as well as in preview a couple of other experiences. So Search being great for end users to be able to actually go out and search for that content. But there's other areas like intelligent discovery where we can actually show content to you based on different activities, things that are going on in the system. Um, so knowing like what are recommendations for you, what are recently accessed files. In the past, that was all content that was just inside of Microsoft 365. Uh, but now we're actually opening the doors for that to be also from external content. Um, there's other areas for compliance in terms of e-discovery. There's a lot of things with the Viva platform that we're looking to integrate with, as well as Context IQ, uh, kind of a quick editor to be able to reference content if you're inside of Outlook, if you're inside of Word, uh, other areas like that. And also there's some preview experiences already available inside of the different people profile cards. So being able to see, hey, content from an HR system or other areas, want to be able to show that directly with uh, that external content as well. And in terms of that external content, what could that be? Well, there's actually a lot of different data sources for this. It might be a on-premise database. It might be a line of business system that you've created. It might be a third-party SaaS service. It might be a file share sitting on some kind of server. And so the idea is that having that content, being able to integrate that directly into Microsoft Graph, then we can actually be able to surface that in those different kind of experiences. So these are normally the ones that we've got uh, kind of lined up um, that are coming in the future, uh, but more about that as we get to some of our um, further conferences uh, down the road. Now, in terms of what does this actually look like? To me, you know, seeing is really believing, being able to actually see like where does this stuff show up? So taking that first example of doing enterprise search, uh, when I think of going into SharePoint or office.com or things like Bing, I can be able to go and find kind of our all content coming back from sites, from people, from files, from uh, news articles, things like that. But with Graph Connectors, we're actually introducing this other kind of external content as well. And so the idea here is that when you're on that all tab, we can actually show what we call a result cluster. Uh, and this can actually be coming from that external source. So if you have something come from, let's say, a set of research articles that you've got uh, in some kind of third-party system, maybe you've got content, again, in an on-prem database or some of the kind of repository, we can actually integrate that directly onto the All tab and show that content in there. It is fully up to you in terms of the as the connector author being able to modify the lookout and feel for this. So we are using adaptive cards to actually go and render that content out there. If you want to display images, if you want to display logos, text, uh, URLs, snippets of the actual content in there, maybe even like who modified this or what was the date for things. Those are all things that you can be able to go and actually update into there. Or you can actually go ahead and create custom verticals for this. So if you want to scope your content to show directly inside of that uh, custom vertical out there, another option for you to be able to show that uh, content in there. And again, now we're actually going beyond just that little small um, cluster of results. And now you can actually get the full set of them um, to be able to do some things like filtering uh, and be able to actually get a little bit deeper into that content. So as long as you've properly defined your schema for that graph connector, we actually go ahead and actually use some of that metadata properties to further refine um, that content that's coming through. Maybe you've got what's the source for this, maybe the file type for this, the extension, maybe some kind of date filters. Lots of ways to be able to interact with that content and then be able to show it out there on the search results page. Now, a couple of recent releases that I do want to cover for folks, just um, you may not have had a blog post on all these different items, but just kind of recap some of the things that are out there. We do have some doc updates out there to associate with these things. The first thing to mention is we do now actually support a limited set of schema updates. Um, in the past, when you defined your connector, you'd specify that schema that tells us, hey, here's all the metadata properties that I'm looking to update for this. Uh, so this is going to be the title, the modified date, the um, author for this, the actual content of the things that are out there. In the past, if you wanted to add a new property, if you wanted to add a new semantic label to that or an alias or similar kind of things, unfortunately, you had to tear down and recreate the entire connection out there. These days, we actually do support some limited number of capabilities in terms of adding new properties out there, adding new labels, uh, modifying the aliases that are out there. So there's a few of these that are supported in kind of a um, uh, initial release for this. We are looking at additional different types of scenarios for this. Uh, and now, if when you think about this in terms of uh, what kind of things might require re-ingesting content? There are a few scenarios that that does um, be the case. Again, if I'm adding new properties onto there, I need to basically re-index that content so I have the latest and greatest out there to show in search results, to show any other experiences out there. So in our docs, we do call out what are those scenarios and which ones do require re-ingestion. 
Um, just a note to everybody that, yes, there are some new support for scenarios like that. Additionally, the permissions that we use for our OAuth authentication, in the past, they were a little bit limited. Um, we only had essentially, hey, go and write to all connections out there or write to the ones that I own. Um, but that was using application permissions, basically those unintended kind of service count level uh, access into this. We didn't really have as much support for delegated permissions or for as fine grain of permissions. Through talking with a lot of our partners and a lot of our customers, we realized, hey, there are a lot of other scenarios that we do need support. So we worked on adding that support into there, and we're actually very, very close to publishing the docs updates to this, um, but they're actually live in the platform. So if you'd like to go out and test these things out, um, we do have support for additional properties that are out there. Stay tuned for the docs updates that should be coming very, very shortly. And lastly, um, for our access control list, how we actually secure the content out there, Yes, every single item that you push in through a connector, these can be um, permissioned. So if you have a Azure AD group, if you have an Azure AD user, or we even support things called external groups, um, you can kind of define those however you'd like to for the permissions on this. Uh, we've simplified the model for how you specify what that's, um, that property looks like. And so ingesting the content with that ACL on there, we've got a little bit kind of a streamlined process for that. So good, good to see some platform updates that are coming out for connectors and make it a little bit easier for developers to actually go forward uh, with those elements. Also a quick note that we do have some uh, updates in terms of uh, Microsoft built connectors that are out there. Um, there's a couple of different uh, sources from Jira to Confluence to ServiceNow and so forth. Those are actually been released to GA within the last couple of months. Um, so great to see more platforms, more support, and additional things are being supported with those Microsoft built connectors. Now, what is coming? There are a couple of different things that we'll share a little bit more about. We've got some roadmap items for some of these. Other ones are um, on their way to being uh, released. So we'll talk a little bit more about these items. The first is increased scale. Uh, in the past, we only supported 700,000 items per connection. Uh, and when you combine that together with the 10 connections allowed for the entire tenant, that meant that you only had 7 million items for the entire tenants there. Very soon, we're actually in the midst of rolling this out. So this will be here pretty, pretty shortly. Um, some of you may, may have already seen this. Uh, others, it's coming to your tenants very quickly. Um, we're actually increasing that scale now to actually support 5 million items per connection. So combine that together with the 10 per tenant, and you actually have 50 million items that will support for an individual tenant out there. You can actually see a screenshot of one of our demo environments. Um, here are a couple of our connections that have that increased scale out there. So you can already see that they have, again, the limit for 5 million items, and they're storing very close to that uh, in terms of the number that are in there. And then pairing that together with what is available from a throughput perspective, uh, currently it is set at four items per second that you can be able to ingest at a time. Uh, with this increased scale for number of items, we're also increasing the throughput. Uh, so we're going to be getting up to 20 documents or 20 items per second that you can be able to ingest. So a lot faster for us to be able to fill that connection up uh, as well as do kind of things like re-indexing or uh, incremental crawls, things like that to go and update. So great ways for C additional scale uh, being able to go with that. And then lastly, we did actually have a previous community call presentation on this. This is for our Graph Connectors SDK. If you are building your own line of business or kind of your own custom connector out there, uh, it is possible to hit use this SDK to actually go out and kind of uh, ease the on-ramp for this. Uh, basically, it provides a number of the kind of behind the scenes plumbing, some of the different kind of sample um, code snippets that you'll need to be able to actually go and implement these things. Please take a look at the previous community call. Um, we'll make sure that that's in the, um, the playlist out there so you can take a look and see how to build connectors with the SDK. With this, I'll jump over to our docs so I can actually show you a little bit about how to be able to build your connectors. Um, and today we'll focus a little bit on using Postman to go and do that. So the first thing I want to do is highlight that we can go out to um, our documentation for this. The first page to go to is AK, oops, aka, if I can type, .ms slash graph connectors API. And when you go to this page, you can see a little bit about using graph connectors, overview for this, how can you build things. The area that we want to go into is this use Postman on the left-hand side. And with this, you can see that we can actually use the Postman collection for Microsoft Graph. Um, we've published this for quite a while now. And the idea is that, hey, with a lot of different resources on Microsoft Graph, I may want to be able to test these things out. Great to be able to use things like Graph Explorer, um, which is kind of one of our websites to be able to test out different APIs, queries, see samples, see um, different snippets and things like that. But there's some scenarios that you can't do in Graph Explorer. Um, one of the primary ones is being able to actually use application permissions. 
And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, that's being able to do like service accounts or kind of unattended uh, queries against things. And so for with graph connectors, there are a few key scenarios that you have to use application permissions for this. And so because of this, um, we do have a sample set of different APIs and requests that you can make. Uh, and we built all those requests uh, for graph connectors and we bundled them together with the Microsoft Graph uh, set of APIs and, and samples that are out there. So this uh, article out here on this page, this will walk you through a little bit of how do I actually go and clone, uh, kind of fork that repo out there? How do I import that into um, Postman, be able to work with the different uh, APIs that are out there? It'll show you a little bit about actually creating your own Azure AD application. Here we go, all the steps through this, configuring authentication. Uh, and the nice part is all these things are basically baked into the Postman collection. So really all you need to do is fork that repo, be able to pull it into your environment uh, and hook in what is your Azure AD application that you're using for this. So once you've got that, uh, a great way to kind of get up and started with being able to call against graph connectors, test things out, and you'll see what you got there. With that, I'll flip over now to Postman. And here you can see, I'm gonna scroll all the way up. Here's our Microsoft Graph collection. I've already imported this into my own environment. I can go under application, which is gonna be where I've got a lot of my different um, sample queries going against graph connectors. And you'll see we've got this split out in a couple of different areas. There's some of the initial things for creating your connection, actually setting it up. If you need to register your schema, you can go ahead and get the schema. You can go and get the connection, all those kind of great things for doing just the administration upfront for things. We also have for doing content sync. Now, this is my own custom uh, Postman collection out there. So I've got a couple of additional things that you may not see in your own. This is just for me for doing demo purposes, but I can go ahead and do the upserts. Uh, this is either an update or an insert for a number of different items out there. I can go and get items. I can do a partial update. I can delete items. So great ways to go and interact with that content that's out there. And as well, if you wanna do things for identity sync, as I mentioned before, you can set those ACLs, the access control list out there. And for this, uh, sometimes you actually need to go and do those external groups. So here's a great way you can actually test those things out, be able to go and create that external group, uh, be able to populate that with Azure AD users uh, and other kind of ways to integrate with that uh, identity uh, areas. Now, I see a, qu a great question from the chat, uh, which is, uh, is this something akin to BCS? Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, that was the Business Connectivity Services part of SharePoint. Was that 2013, I believe? Um, I could say this is uh, similar to that, but it is not gonna be functionally equivalent like one for one on that. Um, BCS was really about being able to connect to an external data source and display that as a SharePoint list um, inside of SharePoint 2013, SharePoint Online and other uh, areas. Now with graph connectors, we can ingest content in, but it's really not gonna be about um, doing that real time in the UI updates to that. Instead, it's gonna be more of displaying this in a number of different um, capacities. So think of it more of like a one-way ingestion. Um, we are looking at ways to do kind of a two-way sync. So if I you know, delete an item somewhere inside of uh, M365, I can also sync back to the source system. Um, but today, this is truly um, strictly just a one-way uh, import of content into Microsoft Graph to then actually power in different experiences. Um, the other key difference though is also that uh, inside of N365, we're showing in a lot of different areas. Uh, not only do we have the same side of search uh, uh, hosts, so again, SharePoint, Office.com, Bing, we're also looking at added support for areas like Teams, uh, as well as Windows Desktop, so areas that you know BCS didn't really play in previously, as well as integrating with new platforms. Again, Viva Topics um, in terms of the uh, Office.com recommendations and a couple of other areas. So there are some other ways to be able to integrate with us that go outside of what BCS supported. Now, swinging back to uh, the demo on here. So here I've got this uh, under application. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get my access token for this. Now, I happen to have a whole bunch of my um, secrets uh, for my environment already set up with this. So when we think about you know, the client ID, the secret to actually go and authenticate for this, I've already plugged these into my environment. So when I go ahead and do the get new access token, go, go ahead and proceed. When I go ahead and use this token, it's actually gonna save it into a variable for me. So I can actually use this in further requests. And when I come down to like my get all collections, you can see here is the graph request that we're gonna be firing off, graph.myself.com slash v1 external slash connections. Go ahead and send this request. And when I take a look at the bottom down here, here is my JSON uh, payload return for this. You can see I've got two connections in the sample environment in here. And if I go over to my 
Yep, Search Administration Center. We can go over to data sources. You can see that those match up with the two connectors um, that I've created custom in this environment. There we go. Contestal PTJ files and PTJ test. And I can go and take, go ahead and take a look at some other things like get the schema for this. Go ahead and just grab the first um, schema that's out there. Again, great way to kind of validate what are all the properties that I have defined for this. Things like the ID for it, the title, what is the extension for the item that I'm pulling in, what's it, who's it created by, what was the created date time, last modified, and so forth. So I can actually go and validate what is that schema for this connection out there. If I want to go and update items out there, I can also do that with our simple puts on these. And with these, our payload can be either the full item itself, if you want to specify, sorry, specify every single property that exists on um, that source system, or if you only want to do a partial update, you can do that as well. So a great way to have kind of flexibility in terms of, hey, I want to go and update the ACL and that access control list for this, or I only want to update maybe a couple of properties on this and not actually do the entire set of um, items that are out there. So if I go ahead and pull back just a simple item that's out there already, I've got here, let's say my item three. And again, I'm using the same authorization token for all these different requests. So it's kind of a get that token once, be able to come back and run multiple queries that are out there. But here you can see one of my items. And again, I can see again who is access for this. Item three actually has everyone in the tenant that can go and access this. Here's all those properties. So the nice part here is that not only can I ingest this content and be able to see it inside of the native experiences, if I'm in again, SharePoint, office.com, inside of Bing, I can also use the API to go and actually render this content in my own custom UI. So if you have a third party search portal, if you have an intranet, if you have some other kind of thing that you're try trying to show the content in, great way to be able to leverage Microsoft Graph APIs, calling through these search APIs, pull that content back out and actually render this in multiple locations. So great way to see where we can um, surface this content in multiple different locations. And just show you this isn't smoke and mirrors, we'll actually pull up office.com. And I'll go ahead and search for just um, sample, literally the word, because that's in like all of my sample content, hint, hint. And if we go over here to that BTJ files, you can see that, yes, there's like that sample item three. And again, I have the permission so that all users can see this content. But because this user isn't actually in all the other groups that are out there, this user is not seeing items one, two, and five. So great way to just kind of see that, yes, this is not smoke and mirrors. I'm actually seeing the content live inside of the system on here, showing up in one of my uh, kind of major hosts out there for Office. Same thing would happen for SharePoint or for Bing, and soon the other hosts that are coming as well for Teams uh, and for Windows Desktop. Mm -hmm.